which founder owned the land on which Times Square currently sits? Hi Founder fans, Jason here, and today's founder is a man named John Morin Scott. John Morin Scott, while still in his early 20s, had come from one of the wealthiest families in New York, attended Yale, and established the premier law firm in New York City. And it was at this point that he decided to work with two friends and write a newspaper called The Independent Reflector. And the Independent Reflector had one goal. It was to prevent King's College from being established in New York City. Now, King's College would be established, and we know it today as Columbia University. But the reason they were so against it is there were a lot of Protestants in New York State. And King's College was to be an Anglican University. The fear was that this university would have an Anglican bishop sent to run the university and, in certain people's eyes, corrupt the population. Now, that's their idea, not mine, I assure you. But continuing along, uh, Moore and Scott actively opposed this. And as I said, it was unsuccessful. They did establish the university. But what's interesting is, first of all, this was the beginning of his rebellious spirit. And the other two people he worked with were named William Smith and William Livingston. William Smith I know very little about. I'm assuming he's not the Fresh Prince. Uh, William Livingston would go on to be governor of uh, New Jersey throughout the revolution and a signer of the, uh, the Constitution. So, Moore and Scott would continue, and 20 years later, when the revolution began to break out, he actively opposed the British taxation and the British's laws that were being passed. In fact, he was one of the founding members of the New York City Sons of Liberty. And from there, he joined all of the revolutionary committees that took possession and, and operation of New York's government from the colonial governor to the revolutionary government, and then helped write the state's constitution to transfer it to a state government. He was a humongously influential figure in the state of New York at the founding. In fact, he was also commissioned as a brigadier general in New York state militia, and he served during the Battle of Brooklyn, the Battle of Harlem Heights, uh, and the Battle of White Plains. After that, though, he did resign because he was elected to certain political positions. First of all, he was a nominee for the first the first governor of New York State, although he lost his position to what would be a longtime governor, George Clinton. George Clinton turned around and quickly appointed John Moore Scott as Secretary of State for New York State. And in this position, he oversaw operation of the state itself. And New York City was occupied throughout the war. There were a lot of battles going on, and it was a very difficult but important job that he held. Now, he was actually appointed as an associate justice of the state Supreme Court, but he turned it down because he thought being in the state government was so important. Furthermore, he was uh, elected to the Continental Congress, which he did attend twice. Unfortunately, basically right when the war ended, John Moore and Scott died suddenly, but his son, whose name was Louis Allaire Scott, took over the position of Secretary of State and held it for the next 15 years. So for the first 22 years of the existence of New York State, one of the two Scott men oversaw the operation of that state. So that's a brief history of John Moore and Scott. I sure hope you enjoyed it. I enjoyed making it. If you're, you enjoyed it, please hit like. And if you're new here, definitely subscribe and stick around for tomorrow. We have a live video where we'll talk about all the articles I wrote this week. It'll be a whopping good time. So thank you so much for watching and I look forward to seeing you tomorrow.